Stay tuned for tonight's adventure with the Fat Man. Okay, here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day it is, I hope it's good to be where you are because I'm really excited to be here today. My name is Baltimore Fats, and this is Starport City. Yeah, <laughs> okay, have fun, guys. Okay, so there was this idea I put out, and I think the last video, that the most important part about being the guy in doing all this surveying and measuring and recording of the magnetic hotspots is that you get to choose who you share that information with. Who would Alexander Backey share his findings with? His scientific brethren, sure. His pupils, probably. The federal government who was footing the bill, absolutely. Right, but if there's one thing we know about Alexander Backey, it's who he's loyal to. And if there's an institution that stands higher than the scientific principles of his learned societies, it's the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Backey was an army man through and through, and a, and if there was information more beneficial to the Corps of Engineers. I'm betting he saves it for them, or for himself even. All right, the Army Corps of Engineers with their red and white castle and their compass. And this is interesting here. This trippy optical illusion of a sphere, right? Certain, certainly it represents the Earth with its longitude and latitude lines because that's what Backey's job was as head of the U.S. survey, to map the longitude and latitude of the United States. And we'll get more into that down the line, I'm sure. But what we have here is the narrative's story of how our realm was developed as we know it today, certainly at least in North America, right? It was Backey's job to make sure that the landscape matched what he and the federal government was putting down on their maps. And he has the Army Corps of Engineers at his disposal to make that so, literally moving mountains, I'm guessing, right? And this plays right into the last population reset timeline that that the mud flood idea sort of introduced and that the mud city paradigm puzzle tree wants to run with. And that's that America was a massive reclamation project. And that's what was happening behind the scenes, if you will, all right, during what our narrative tells us was the 17th and 18th centuries. And the 19th century or the 1800s, that's when they opened the ride to the public, so to speak, right? Introducing their large immigrations of people into the cities they set up for them. As Mud City tells it, these mass immigrations could have been an entirely new people, bred and trained in some of those large brick warehouse complexes that are all over not only this town, but across the realm, right? But that's um, but I'm digressing with this, right? So, But if you're looking for ways to match the idea of digging out and rebuilding of what we know today as America, if you're looking to connect that to the historical narrative they've presented to us, having the Army Corps of Engineers there to for lack of a better metaphor, bury the truth, is an awfully nifty idea. And one of the Army Corps of Engineers' first jobs was allegedly building the nation's Star Fort Bastion defenses like Fort McHenry, arguably the most important Star Fort in America. And knowing that Fort McHenry points directly to the Kaaba with this line here, there's certainly more to the story of American Star Forts than meets the eye. And and I'll be the first to admit that I know next to nothing about Star Forts. I bet it's been like three years since I last watched a Star Fort video. So if anyone out there has a good video or two they'd like to link, that'd be great. Because, because I think I need to spend a little more time looking at these Star Forts before I continue with Backy. Because I took a little Star Fort tour and need to see if there's anything I can use going forward. So, I mean, there may not be anything. I don't know. But I have to look anyway. And so, and so it could be a while before I get another video up. But, you know... But here's that Star Fort tour I took, and, you know, I think you'll see why I need to take a closer look, right? And so that's it for this one. Just, you know, remember, guys, just because you don't know the truth doesn't mean you can't have fun with the lies, right? And so until the next one, cheers, guys. Okay, and so what I've done is I've reconnected Fort McHenry and the Kaaba here for this. And I did this because it was brought to my attention that Fort Adams in Newport, Rhode Island, where, where Alexander Backey was first commissioned after graduating from West Point, is a Star Fort. And now, of course, that makes complete sense. I just didn't, I just didn't rabbit hole Fort Adams when I was reading that earliest part of the the commemoration speech. But now, in learning that and seeing that little snippet that I ran of this in a recent video, it made me think. Well, gee, you know that line from Fort McHenry goes right through Rhode Island. How close to Newport does that go? And so, let's check that out. And so here we are, looking at the eastern seaboard, right? And here's our red line here, and 
here's Rhode Island, right? The red line kind of dissects Rhode Island right in half. And now the thing about that is like Newport is located down here on the water. You know, so this line doesn't run directly across Newport or that star fort. But one thing I want to keep in mind as I'm looking at this and doing this is that Google Earth is copyrighted material. This is not a 100% accurate representation of our realm here. Right. And there, there are a lot of reasons for that. I mean, national security is one, but who knows what any of the other number of reasons could be. But the point is, is that this it doesn't necessarily have to be 100 percent accurate and that, you know, with some subtle shifting. Four atoms could fall right on this line here. Right? And, you know, it also made me think that there are a slew of star forts running this way and you know, so starting back in Maryland with Fort McHenry here, going into Delaware, we have Fort Delaware, right? And Fort Delaware was allegedly a star fort, and it was a very important fort during the Civil War. And so this is where Fort Delaware is in relation to the red line. You know, continuing up into Philadelphia, the next one up is Fort Mifflin. Right, and here's Fort Mifflin looking like the fortified star fort that Fort McHenry is. And so let's see where that is in comparison to the line. This is where they put Fort Mifflin. Look how close that is, right? And so following this thing up, I couldn't really find any star forts or anything on Long Island. But again, thinking about the way the map could be different, you know, it could be going right. If this line were to go through, say, you know, New York Harbor in Manhattan, you know, there are a slew of star forts around here, the Statue of Liberty among them, right? You know, moving right along the Eastern Seaboard here, as we talked about, we had uh, Star Fort Adams in Newport, which is here. I wanted to continue this thing along. And what's next is I was looking at this and I was like, wait a minute, I know what's there. Plymouth Rock is there. Look at that. This line drops right over Plymouth Rock. Are you kidding me? <laughs> With the, the beginning of the whole Boston colony and the Puritans and all of that. Plymouth Rock. That's insane. Right. And I think this is also the very area where Mysteries was saying that he felt there was a, there were ruins of a star fort here. Now, I went looking around a little bit. I didn't really see anything, but mysteries, if you're catching this, you know, is this the area? But I just think that's unbelievable that this line goes right over Plymouth Rock. Look at that. All right, and next up, we're moving through into Canada, right? And we go into Nova Scotia. And in Nova Scotia, there's one called the Halifax Citadel. Right? Here it is. Or the Citadel, Citadel Hill, Fort George. Look at that. All right, now let's see where that falls. And wouldn't you know it, it's right on that line too. All right, this is getting a little ridiculous. Continuing on into Newfoundland, of course, Avalon, where Sir George Calvair first went, right? Is there one there? And so what I found was this Fort Royal, right? And there, there's no longer a fort there. There are, are ruins here, allegedly. All right, and it was established in 1662. And so it's quite possible that this was a star fort also. And so when we look at where Fort Royal is on our line map here, look at that. Look at that. It is right on the line. <laughs> as close to it as you can get anyway. All right, this is really incredible. So I'm moving it along further. Right now, I went looking through this area of France, and I couldn't really find any star forts. That's not to say that they aren't there. Again, there's only so much digging I can do in order to, to get a video rolling here. All right, but I next up, I wanted to point out where it goes through. Right, and this is Corsica. And so, since I don't know anything about Corsica, let's take a quick look. And so, the origin of the name Corsica is subject to much debate and remains a mystery. To the ancient Greeks, it was known as Callista. Corsus, Cyrnos, Cernalis, or Cern. Cern? <laughs> the last three variations derive from the most ancient Greek name of the island, Cernausi, meaning of the sirens, the very same sirens mentioned in Homer's Odyssey. Now, that, think about that for a second. That's really incredible because what did the sirens do? They sang their sweet song and lured sailors into the rocks where they would crash. You know, and this line, which originates for me in Fort McHenry, goes right through there. But not only that, this is, gets even crazier. This is insane. The future emperor of France, Napoleon Bonaparte, 
was a native of Corsican, born in Hasio. I don't know how to pronounce that. But now with the but with the Bonaparte connections to Baltimore and Westphalia and all of this, and for the line drawn from Fort McHenry to pass right through the center of course, oh, how close does it go to this Agio? Let's take a look. All right, Agio is down here, but not that far anyway, <laughs> but still really quite amazing to me. <laughs> These things, you know, I like to say it, my apophenia runs wild, but <laughs> these coincidences get ridiculous. I also went looking for star forts in this trope area of Italy here, you know, this front part of the boot, but again, I, I didn't see anything, but that doesn't mean they aren't there. You know, and again, I, I want to point out that, you know, who knows, with some subtle shifting, that maybe with the maps and lattices and overlays that they have to do that, you know, the representation that we have here could be could lay out a little differently and all of these landmarks could fall along this line. You know, I think that's definitely that's definitely an interesting idea. Right. And so now I'm bringing this thing into the Kaaba again. And so I brought the line as close to that corner as I could. But while I was doing this, I just wanted to point this out because, again, you know, I think there's something to this connection here out of Fort McHenry pointing this way and and having all of these star forts line up. And I think, you know, there's a lot more to the star fort story than just being bastion forts or, you know, protectors of bays and harbors and things like this. I mean, and fortifications for military purposes. I think there's something much deeper involved and that does involve the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and Alexander Backey and, and those guys. And I'm going to look a little closer at them soon. But one thing that... <laughs> ooh, one thing that I noticed while I was looking at this and setting things up was this, and this is really crazy. I talk about apophenia and pareidolia, right? I was looking at this. Oh, let's change the direction a little bit, right? This is the Red Sea here, right? Where'd it go? I'm going to back up a little bit. This is the Red Sea here. And now when you're running a show that has worm knights tracing their origins to, <laughs> to the Middle East, the Red Sea certainly looks an awful lot like a serpent here or a snake with this wiggly figure and these two rocks jutting out his eyes and this narrowing face. And look at these markings along this. I mean, that is unbelievable that <laughs> the Red Sea looks like some weird serpenty, wormy snake creature. I mean, I couldn't believe it, right? <laughs> I mean, that is just incredible. How has no one noticed that before? Right? The mighty Yaldabaoth, there he is, or she, or it, or they, or whatever her pronoun Yaldabaoth wants to be known by. It is just hanging out right there in the Red Sea. Right? That is crazy. And one last thing I wanted to point out coming back to America is that this red line also happens to go right through New London, Connecticut. Right, and this is Groton here, and the Navy sub base, and Pfizer, and all of that, right, right out of New London here. And so that's going to wrap up this video tour here, and we'll, we'll see if there's any more to do for this episode. Okay, and so I think the only thing I'd like to add here, other than to reiterate that I do not think that this is a coincidence at all, this formation of star forts, this line here, and the way that these all connect, right? But one thing I forgot to mention is that Fort Delaware is in Wilmington, which is, of course, home to Pfizer's corporate headquarters and also home to our esteemed President Joe Biden. So that makes two locations with connections to Pfizer that this line goes through. Right? It goes through Wilmington and then the New London, Groton, Connecticut area. Heavy, heavy ties with Pfizer. So, you know, again, I don't know what to make of that. And, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure what I should make of these star forts that line up and go directly to the kebab. But... You know, there's something there. I'm sure of it. All right. And so that's it, guys. Until the next one. Cheers.